Hey everyone, Carol Garrison with Carol's Creative Escape. So glad that you could join me for this week's Thursday Tips. Today we're going to be focusing on stenciling and I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can use stencils. Um, some you've probably seen before and some may be new and that you kind of learned something new from watching this today. So in front of me here I've got four different stencils, uh, stars, mountains, clouds, and kind of a sunburst. These came as the free gift in the March Paper Pumpkin Kit. And um, they were given because that's the birthday month for Paper Cup Pumpkin. We always get something extra with that kit. And this month it happened to be the um, stencils that we have in front of us. So I'm going to show you a couple traditional ways to use stencils. And then bring in... Um, a couple stencils that I made myself so that you can see how easy it is to do. And then I also want to do a little bit with some of the um, embossing paste that we have as well. So let's just jump right in and get started here. And I am going to do, just bring in a piece of white paper here. I've got my stars that I'm going to put down. I'm not going to make any cards tonight. I really just want to show you different ways that you can use these stencils. And so I use washi tape um, primarily because it does, oh, that one's got cat hair in it. Um, primarily because it doesn't stick to my paper and I can easily peel it off when I'm done, but it will hold my stencil in place. And um, I find that that's one of the most important things for me to do because I do tend to cause things to jump around just a little bit. Um, you know, I might bump it or something. So I'll just tape it, tape it down on my paper. And right now I just have an eight and a half by 11 piece of the basic white that I can use as an example for you. So I think most of us understand the basic concept of stenciling. We started off with our good old sponges. Well, that one has glue on it. <clears throat> We started off with our good old sponges. I always cut mine into quarters, and um, when they start to get old, I take a Sharpie and add a K for my cat kitty, and they become her toys. I actually have to remove mine from her reach because she will take them. They make very good cat toys. So let's just take a little bit of crushed curry ink, and I'm gonna take my sponge and just wipe it into my ink. I never know for sure how much color I'm picking up, so I do like to rub it off just a little bit so I kind of get a feel for how my sponges are holding ink. And so I am going to take and just rub my sponge over half of this particular dye. And I'm only going to do half because I want to actually use the... Um, uh, blending brushes so that you can see the difference between the two. And I have gone off edge. Obviously, if you're doing this for a card, you'd probably want your card stock to be a little narrower than the um, stencil that you're using. That way you don't run off the edge. So then let's just take our blending brushes now and I'm gonna again rub that in. These I don't worry as much about um, you know sensing how dark they are but you can kind of see they they tend to come off not quite as heavy in ink as our sponges will and so I'm just gonna rub over and you can tell it really doesn't take a lot of ink um, as I'm going over it these are a lot smoother going over the edges of the stencil even um, so I think you're going to get a, a smoother texture as well. So let's peel off our washi tape. And I'm going to just lift this off. So you can see actually the blending brush worked a lot better than what my sponge did. Um, I think I had, I'm not quite sure why I got those dark spots on there. Um, it looks like it's all kind of at the tip of the stars. 
So my recommendation is if you're doing stencils, really stick with our blending brushes because they do a much better job than the, the sponges do. I think part of that is we have more control and, and do a lighter swirl over our stencils. So there's demonstration number one, sponge versus blending brush and blending brush wins. Then I wanted to show you a way that you can make your own stencil. And I cut out two different shapes for you. I just used window sheets. And on one, I cut out um, a leaf from the Forever Floral dies. And I just wanted that, that image. And so again, I'm gonna take my washi tape and just hold down my die cut that I've created. And on this one, I am actually gonna use a sponge dauber because I've got some fine corners to get into. But then again, I'm also gonna bring in my blending brush so you can kind of see the difference on how these two things work. So as long as we're dealing with some green, I'm gonna bring in the Evening Evergreen, which is the new in color, one of the new in colors that'll be coming out in our annual catalog. And I'm just gonna run my dauber over it. These are still um, new pads, so they tend to have a lot of ink on it. And so again, with my window sheet, I just made a, an image with a die cut. And I'm gonna start by rubbing my sponge dauber over it. Now, I probably didn't pick the best die cut to be using because it's got this piece in here that flipped up. So keep that in mind. Um, but the sponge does work nicely on these leaves. And the nice thing about doing window sheets, you run them under water and they're done. You can clean them off and reuse them. Let's try using our blending brush and see how that goes. And again, the blending brush also picked up this chunk here. So my recommendation is don't have this type of thing that's gonna get in the way, but that's part of the reason we do these techniques is so that we can see what works and what doesn't work. And again, I'm gonna say that the blending brush comes in for the wind over the daubers. Now the daubers, I did get a much darker color and it's actually not bad except where I caught the, the window sheet and lifted it up, but here, Again, you get a lot softer look, and you'd be able to stamp over this image. Um, to demonstrate that just a little bit further and give you an idea on something that you might be able to do, I also created a stencil using, and it's clear, so of course I'm not going to be able to find it on my desk surface. Here it is. I just used one of the layering circles to create my image or my my stencil I guess because what I really want to be able to do is get this image sponged in kind of a reverse masking sort of a thing so that I can stamp a greeting on top of that so let's go ahead and I'm going to go back to my crush curry and grab my brush here and I'm just going to lightly and gently go into circle motions. And so now what I've done is created this great scallop circle. I'm gonna get a little bit darker right there. This great scallop circle, which can be on my card. And then all I need to do is take a greeting, and here I've got the Enjoy the Moment stamp set. And I am going to use Actually, let me use this. You could use a greeting or you could use an image. And I'm gonna stamp this to give you an idea of how you could easily make a silhouette uh, type image over the circle. So I'm gonna use my Memento ink and ink up the stamp. 
and it's just going to be inked in black. And I'll stamp it right over the circle that I've made. And so you could do some really cool stamping with kind of getting a silhouette look depending on the different shapes that you use, the stamps that you use, and just have a real subtle background behind your images. So that's another great way to do some stenciling. Now there is a fun way that I want to show you using our embossing paste. And I am going to use, oh, let's do some clouds because then I can do the clouds both ways. Now, when you're looking at clouds, I think they kind of go like that. We're just gonna, for sample purposes, I'm gonna put it this way. Um, I, You know, with this stencil, you're probably gonna wanna move it around a little bit when you're sponging it so that you're getting different clouds mixed up with each other. But for the purposes of what I'm doing today, I, I want to show you a couple things with the embossing paste, uh, which are pretty cool as well. So again, I'm just going to tape that down. And I'm going to start by using the shimmery white embossing paste. And I've had this for a while. Um, and I just keep my foil wrapper on top. It does dry out just a little bit, and when it gets too dry, I can just re-moisten it. Um, but again, for my demonstration that I wanna show you, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of this out, and I'm gonna just start rubbing it over the clouds. And you don't need a lot of this. You kind of put it in uh, like you're a mason. and spread it on your clouds. And then I like to come back, you actually can get three tools to work with the embossing paste here. And the one I like for kind of finishing up um, my work, they, there's this shape, this one, and then this one, kind of a trowel type shape. And I like using the trowel when I'm finishing up stuff because I can get a nice good scrape right over that. And it'll be pretty level then in the artwork that I'm going. And then you just scrape it off. Now when you are using this paste, you want to, or the, yeah, the embossing paste, you want to make sure you're washing your stuff off right away because this will dry pretty hard and um, can become a bit of a pain to clean. So the other trick that I want to show you for embossing is I've got just a, a piece of window sheet here and I'm gonna put just a little bit of my paste on here. And because I'm done taking it out of the jar and I don't want that drying out any more than it has to, I'm gonna put my foil piece back on and close this up right away. And I do actually store mine in the Ziploc bag that it came in too, just to make it as airtight as possible. All right, so we've got kind of stormy clouds brewing. And so we want to get a little bit of, um, let me grab my Misty Moonlight reinker because I think that's going to be a bit of a stormy mix along with a little bit of Highland Heather. So I'm just going to add a drop or two of my reinker to the paste. And again, I've got a drop or two of the Highland Heather just to give the purple tone that storm clouds sometimes can have. And then we'll go ahead and use our tool to stir that in. And so now what I've done is created a colored shimmery paste that I can use to create my storm clouds or any other image that I wanted to do. So it doesn't take a lot. And again, I'm just going to scrape those in, trying to be very careful to not go where I've already gone with the paste. But I might get over there just a little bit. That's all right.
And again, I'm just going to come through with my tool and scrape off. Looks like I did too good a job scraping off some of the excess here. Come through a little gentler and scrape off. And you don't necessarily have to have it even because clouds can get a little billowy. So if they're uneven and a little bit rough, that's okay because especially with storm clouds, that's gonna happen. And so then when you're done with that, this stuff dries really quick. But again, you don't wanna leave it sitting on your stencils or any other tool that you've got because it will stick and become a regular part of that. So here I dropped the stencil in here beauty of going live and so I do now have a little crease going in there but I'm going to lift this up in the hopes that you can see the raised edge a little bit on this embossing folder or the embossing of the clouds so you're going to get a little bit more texture or detail into your your cards just by adding that it's not going to add any bulk to speak of for mailing purposes or anything like that but remember that you can go from white to whatever color you want just by adding a little bit of the reinker ink. And then uh, you can create silhouette images just by sponging shapes. You could punch out, create these shapes, take any of your punches and create these images. Um, again, I think for the stencils, the blending brushes really do a better job. It's just a much softer touch. So keep that in mind as you're, you're looking at going into stenciling. But it just adds a whole different appearance to your card. Um, I will post a couple cards that I've made with stencils from the Paper Pumpkin Kit um, probably over the weekend so that you can see it. But I'll add them into the comments and um, give you a chance to see just how much something like this can add to what you're working on. I just wanted to make sure that I did get a Thursday tip out showing you the basics of using stamps, and then I'll follow up to show you some actual projects with this as well. So thanks for joining me for the Thursday tips, and we will see you next week for our tip of the week. Take care. Have a good week. Bye-bye.